in that case, I suppose it's just the, the three of us today. All good? Okay. Then uh, let's get started, guys. Today is a 40-20 day. And uh, here we go. So we've got a few different uh, exercises here. So first up, we got push-ups. You're going to work for 40 seconds, rest 20. You can do either incline, which basically means you do them off a bench or a box. You can do knees, so that means you do them from the floor, but off your knees. You can do them flat, so basically that just means that you're, all, you're not on an incline, right? You're just flat on the floor with your toes, legs straight out. Um, and then you can do decline. That would be the one that would be really hard where your feet would be up on a bench and then you would be hands on the floor, but whatever. Um, you're going to work for 40 seconds, rest 20, work for 40, and then on the, 20, on the second set of 20 seconds rest, you'll move over here to rows. I've got band bent over, one arm dumbbell or kettlebell, and band seated. So those are the, your three different options. Uh, we've got deadlift, and I've got band deadlift or weight deadlift, and then wall sit. You can either do a wall sit, or uh, you can do it with mini band, or you can do it with weight. So, um, let's start you off here by getting you guys doing some standing crunches. So it looks like this. I need to spotlight myself and do a couple of other things here first. Spotlight. Come on. Why do I? Can I spot myself? I should be able to. Well, it would seem that I can't spotlight myself if I am only with, okay, whatever, we'll make it work. Anyways, so my hands are behind my head like this. I'm gonna be doing standing crunches, then I'm gonna bring my right, my right arm to my left knee, left arm to right knee. Right arm to left, left arm to right. I'll get you to do 30 total, and then from there I'm going to get you to do uh, 30 high kicks like that, okay? So as you're doing that, I'll demo the different variations of push-up. Over here, I've got this bench, and I'm going to put my hands at shoulder width apart on the bench, right? The hand position shouldn't change uh, regardless of your angle or of the variation you're doing. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna squeeze, let my shoulder blades come together, and my elbows are gonna come back behind me, and then I'm gonna push away. Let them come back behind me, and then I'm gonna push away. I want to keep my glutes squeezed. I want to keep my core tight and kind of pulled down like this, as if somebody's going to punch me in the stomach and I, I want to block that or I want to defend that. You can also do them on the floor. Like I was saying, the mechanics don't change. It's only the difficulty that changes. Rows. With the rows, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a band. And uh, if I'm doing the band variations, I can either step on the band like this, here, here, and do a bent over variation like this. Or I could also do a seated variation where I am. Like this, band is around the feet, and then my posture is nice and upright, and I'm gonna pull. Back, pull, back, pull, and so on. All right, I would recommend that variation if there are any, um, if you've got any lower back issues, and then if you have a weight, right, chances are you're probably gonna wanna do this variation here. So I'm stepping back, I don't want to be in here like this, and then because now it's pretty much just a bent over with one leg kind of offset here. Like this is how I want to be, and then squeeze my shoulder blades in towards the center of my back and pull. Okay? I want to make sure I'm using my upper back muscles, not my arms predominantly. Okay, once you've done the lower body prep there, I'm going to get you to do upper body stuff. So I'm going to get you to start by doing a tricep stretch. So hold this for three sets of 10 seconds. 
And then on the other side for three sets of 10 seconds, right? Three times 10 seconds, whatever. And then I want you to do 30 arm circles forward and 30 arm circles back. From the deadlift, we got our um, wall sit. Sorry, I didn't do, didn't dam I didn't demonstrate the deadlift, did I? No, wow, it's still early. Haven't had enough coffee. So I can step onto the band like this for the deadlift. I want to keep my hips back, my shoulders set, and then all I'm going to do is stand up. Down, stand up, down, stand up, like so, okay? I can also do that with weight. And with weight, it would just look like this, here. Up, up. And so on, okay? Finally, we have wall sit. Basically, what you're gonna do is you're gonna find a spot on the wall, and I've got mine all the way back here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit with my feet hip width apart, and I'm gonna let my knees come down to 90 degrees. I'm gonna push my hips, my low back, my hips back into the wall as I sit here, and I'm just holding it. 40 seconds. You can add weight to it. You can put a mini band around your knees so that you can kind of ensure a little bit more that you're going to have glute activation because the band's going to pull your knees in and you're going to be pushing against that, which then is going to activate the hip abductors, the, the, part, the muscles that pull your legs apart, which then is more so going to help your glutes. All right. So, <clears throat> all right. Enough talking. Let's get this thing going here. Guys, let's get started here. We're going to do push-ups. So choose the variation that you want to do. And we're going to go here in five, four, three, two, one, 40 seconds. Let's go. Remember, with the push-ups, when you're doing them, you want to make sure that your elbows are coming back behind you, like I was saying earlier, but I mean that in two senses of the word. Yes, I mean back behind your torso, you know, front to back, but I also mean, or I'm sort of implying that I don't want your elbows super wide and high like this. I want them, your, your arms, your elbows to kind of come. Okay, rest, guys. I don't want you up here, right? Because this is a lot, it's gonna be a lot of, it's gonna to lead towards internal rotation of the shoulder, right? And that is gonna work your delts, fair enough, but that's not quite what we're going for when we're talking about the standard push-up. But the standard push-up, we wanna be working our pecs, go! Uh, our pecs are gonna be the primary driving force um, to move us dynamically. And then there's the delts, yes, which are involved, and the triceps primarily, but they're going to be assisting the movement um, as opposed to, you know, uh, yeah, they're, they're assisting the driving part of the movement. And then when you're also setting up in, in the plank position to do the push up, what you want to do is you want to make sure, sure your abs kind of cinch down and are tight. And then same thing with your glutes. You want this, these two areas help to support this area. All right, your low back. All right, guys, switch it over. We're going to get going on the rows, on the rows again. I just can't wait to get on the rows again. Three, two, one, and rows, let's go. My love is making gains with my friends. I can't wait to get on the rows again. On the rows again, like a band of gypsies, we are down the. Highway. That's just me. That's just Stephen. Stephen, why are you such a weirdo? Okay, rest. 
Look at Ben the Gypsies, we're the world's best of friends. Insisting that the world keep turning our way. Three, two, one, and go. Second set here of the rows. After this, we're going to be moving over to deadlifts. Okay, guys, rest. We're gonna switch it over to deadlifts. Three, two, one, and go. So when it comes to the deadlifts, it's really important that you have, I know people always say, oh, you need a strong core, you need a strong core, but like, what does that actually mean for me, the lay person? Well, what that means is, imagine your spine is like a gigantic tower, right? Like a radio tower. Except it's a little bit less stable than if you just stuck, even if you just stuck like a radio tower in the dirt, right? Uh, it would be even a little bit less stable than that because it's designed to have some degree of ability Rest to sort of flex back and forth and sort of move a little bit, right? Because I'm not, I'm not stuck like this, right? I can kind of bend down, I can bend back. That's great. It's minimal. Of course, it's great because it allows me to do things that I enjoy, like running. Let's go. Like playing sports, right? Like things I enjoy, like when I drop $50 on the ground, I like to pick that, pick that back up, right? But it does have downsides when it comes to stability, right? Because if we're just a, a, a skeleton of a spine, you know, or a spine skeleton flapping in the breeze, like that's not very stable. So we've got muscles in our body. I don't know, crazy thought, but anyways, Mr. Obvious, Captain Obvious to you, um, that allow, us to hold our spine in certain positions rigidly. Rest guys, we're gonna switch over to wall sits. I know, I know it's gonna be fun. Quads are gonna burn. Um, and so, two, one, go. When we're talking uh, about giving the spine rigidity and the muscles doing that, uh, one of the big drivers of that is both your core muscles on the front side, and then also sort of your lower back muscles into your hips on the back, on the, on the back side of your body. And it's these two things that kind of act like drawstrings away from the center line. Not, they're not literal draw, obviously, not, but they sort of help when those muscles are clenched, they provide a sort of cinching mechanism that holds your spine stable in its natural position. And rest, guys. What happens when we uh, add too much weight or do more reps with a given weight than what our body or our core can handle is we will often then lose that rigidity to some extent. And it doesn't have to be much, just, just enough. Go! Just enough to cause excessive flexion or, or, or extension of the spine. And that's where um, you get pain from because what, what happens, right, is the spinal cord runs through the spine and, well, and it doesn't even have to be necessarily directly related to the spinal cord, but you also have all these little uh, bursae type things. They're like little pads that sit between your vertebrae. And uh, they give a little bit of cushion for the different sections and different uh, pieces of your spine. 
I'm looking for the other word. Rest. All right, guys, going right back into push-ups here. I know you weren't expecting a, uh, a whiteboard lecture this early in the morning, but guess what? Surprise. Here you go. It's because I've only got Chris and Arlen. And uh, if you want to hear me drone on, guess what? You got to come to the 615. All right, guys, next round here, we're doing push-ups to start. Three, two, one, go. So that's where, right, when we have insufficient core strength or abs are too weak or whatever, whatever way you've heard that said, right, and then we go to do something, we tweak our back, right? Um, and that happens because there's excessive flexion or, or, or extension of the spine oftentimes, or in a lot of cases, I'm not going to say that happens across the board, but it happens in a lot of cases. And then that's where, you know, you can get a herniated disc, a disc bulge, right? Um, or even in some cases, right, a, a nerve gets pinched. There's a lot of nerve roots that run from the hips and well, relatively also all over the body, but they all connect, rest, they all connect into that central nerve that kind of runs up your, your, well, your spinal cord, which runs up your spine. And, uh, and so that's where a lot of people's pain comes from. Go! Um, so the first step when you're trying to get a stronger core, in my estimation, as my experience would uh, dictate, would be, would be that if you have lower back pain, first you got to figure out what is not going to aggravate it because you have to mitigate your, your, you have to cancel your negatives, right? Before you can add positives. So before you can go about, you know, strengthening your core, well, maybe you can integrate the two to some extent, but you need to figure out rest. Um, you need to figure out what is not going to cause issues, right? So people, you know, uh, I used to, for example, before I studied a lot more of this kind of stuff, two, one, and go, right? I used to think what, what came to my mind when somebody said, you need to build your core is, I'll, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do, I'm going to hook my feet underneath my bed and I'm going to do 30 or 50 or 100 sit-ups every morning and that's going to be core work. But that kind of core work often neglects all the different functions and all the different ways that your core can work and, and, uh, and the ways in which it stabilizes your body. So um, you want to find exercises that A, don't irritate what's a pre-existing condition, rest. And then the second thing you want to do is you want to build static core strength and as well as, remember I said the backside here, hips, glutes, that area lumbar uh, muscles. Three, two, one, and go. And you wanna make sure you can hold those positions statically for some you know, reasonable period of time without uh, having compensation or uh, irritation of those areas that you have as pre-existing conditions starting to flare up or swell up or, or do whatever it is that they're doing that you really would like to avoid. Um, yeah. Welcome. Welcome to my Ted talk. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, guys, rest. We're switching over to deadlifts. Ah, that's where it all started. Deadlifts. Right. So the deadlift is a great exercise because it does work on both those things. It works on keeping, uh, working dynamically through a range of motion of your hips, but then also it helps because if you can execute it well and learn how to execute it well, your core is having to deal with a lot of sort of these, you know, I'm going to call them destabilizing motions or forces or whatever you want to call them like that. But the core has to deal with that in a dynamic setting, and that's real life, right? And so when you can do that safely plus add load, it really, really does strengthen 
not only your legs, not only your glutes, but core, upper back. You know, it's, it's a great exercise because it takes care of so many muscles in one uh, pattern. <clears throat> and rest. Okay, three, two, one, and let's go. Next set. Oh, who else is looking forward to having things finally open up this week? This guy, yeah, exactly. Can't wait. Two, one, and good. All right. <clears throat> Guys, we're gonna finish off the wall sits here. Five, four, Three, two, one, and go. All right, rest. Uh, this is it guys, home stretch here. We're almost done. We got a little finisher after this and we'll call it a day. Three, two, one, go. And rest. Okay. Awesome work, guys. So, let's talk through the finisher here. For the finisher, we're gonna be doing a Tabata, and I'm gonna have you doing two exercises. They are both core exercises. And um, so, what we're gonna do is we're gonna head back over to the bench here. You can also do this from the floor if you want to. But I'm gonna head over to the bench here, and I'm gonna get my hands shoulder width apart, my shoulders are stacked over my wrists, and then now I'm going to take my knees up like this. And then once I pick it up, I can start to kind of end up doing a bit of like a mountain climber run type thing. All right, I can also do this from the floor, here like this, and in, 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 and so on. So I've got some different options there. Once you've done 20 seconds of that, I'm gonna get you sitting back on the floor and you're going to do Russian twists. So I'm here like this, and now I'm rotating, 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 and back and forth, like so. You can always do this with weight, right? You can grab a 10 pound kettlebell, or you can grab a 30 pound kettlebell if you're strong enough for it, but, uh, but you know, it's, we're moving quick here, so. If you want to keep it a bit more uh, faster paced, I'd recommend maybe doing a little bit lighter weight and just going quicker. Anyways, let's get started here. We're going to do the Tabata. Five, four, three, two, one, and go. Right. 
right? So I guess, you know, wh why the mountain climber? Well, a couple of reasons, right? It's a little bit easier, we'll say, to keep your core or your, uh, sorry, yep, switch over. It's a little bit easier to keep your lower back from getting uh, over involved in the movement, I find. Uh, generally with something like leg raises or anything where you're lying on your back, go! And everything where you're lying on your back and you have to extend your legs straight out and then bring them back into you. I find that usually if you're already dealing with a bit of a weak core when it comes to that type of movement, um, then it only aggravates it more. So I, I don't, I, I like to do mountain climbers. Rest, switch it over because you know, it's going to get your heart rate up and it's a good core exercise because of the fact that it holds you in a plank or you have, you hold the plank position, go. And then now you're bringing your knees up, right? To your torso, right? And that creates this sort of cinching action, especially if you can do it correctly, because if you can do it correctly, that indicates that you don't have uh, super tight hip flexors that want to take over and rest, switch it over. Um, so if you find that you feel it a lot, like right in here, chances are you're probably not squeezing your glutes hard enough to keep you braced. And that goes back to my push-up cues from earlier. Let's keep going guys. Um, where it's going to help you keep good hip extension. And then that's going to drive a better pattern when it comes to how you bring your knee up and in. So you're going to feel it a bit more as a cinching action happening here in your lower abdominals. So, uh, switch it over guys. Then the Russian twist, right? We're just working rotational. Uh, oh boy, what are I think I believe it's transverse abdominis. Um, pretty sure it is. Anyways, uh, in with that, so it's just a, a, a range of motion in which, right? I am strengthening my core, and in essence, really, I'm building resilience uh, against danger to my spine. Um, all right, switch it over. Go. And rest. And go. Final round here is starting, guys. We're just about done, just about done. And rest, okay. Final exercise. After this, we are doing a little cool down. We're gonna call it a day, which is very nice, very wonderful. Go. Oh man, just about there. And rest. Awesome, awesome. Okay. Grab some water, guys, and take a short break. And then we're going to get into some stretching here. I'm going to take one little sip of coffee. Oh man, I've been starting to do runs. And uh, so guys, we're gonna start right from the floor here. I've been starting to do runs and uh, well, let me tell you, it feels great on the one hand. I love it, I love getting outside, I love breathing the fresh air and stuff, but oh, I can feel a lot of the muscles in my hips here that are just not hit maybe enough from just straight up lifting and uh, and also my my uh, tibial my shin muscles as well as my calves oh it's fantastic okay 
So I'm going to sit here at 90, 90. So I've got 90 degrees at this knee, 90 degrees at this knee. I'm going to rotate and forward. I'm going to lean here like this and just give it a stretch through my one hip. So that being said, you know, there's definitely um, arguments to be made for getting different types of, uh, of exercise, right? I'm not the kind of guy who really likes to sit on an exercise bike for, you know, an extended period of time or, or um, you know, run treadmill or that kind of thing, but, but uh, and bring it up, guys. We're gonna, I've got my, I'm sitting on my right hip. My right hip is forward, right? And my right hand is down. So now I'm gonna take my left hand up here. Inhale, and exhale, rotate over. So I'm not super into like traditional cardio, but um, I do wanna run a smart race in the summer if I can. Running some sort of distance because <laughs> I don't want to be Mr. Weezers. All right, guys, on the side here, 90 degrees at my left knee. I'm sitting on my left hip and 90 degrees on my back leg. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit so that my, my torso is parallel in line and kind of folds over the uh, front leg here again. So if you've got a hobby that allows you to be outdoors, allows you to feel good, you know, be it biking, running, swimming, whatever it is, maybe you all three are a triathlete. That's awesome. Doing those things as well as, as doing weight training is going to be very beneficial for your long-term health. And, All that good jazz. Okay. And back up, guys. Okay. My left hand is down here. My right arm's up. Inhale, exhale, rotate, rotate, rotate. Sit there, guys. Good stuff. Okay. I'm going to get you to bring your feet in close to your butt, like this, here. And then that. And now, what I want you to do is I want you to push your hips up into the air and get a stretch through your quads. And come down. Push up. Come down, shut, and come down, and push up, and good stuff. All right, from there, we get seated like this. My right legs and come in here. My left legs can go straight out. I'm gonna inhale and exhale and push forward. And back off. 
Inhale, exhale, push forward. And back off. Inhale, exhale, push forward. And back off, okay. Other side here, right, right leg straight out, left legs in here. So inhale, exhale, push forward. And back. Inhale, exhale, push forward. And back. More time. And back. All right. Awesome work, guys. Thanks for coming out today. I do appreciate your time. And uh, hopefully the weekend is beautiful. It looks like it's going to be nice. So, well, not right right now. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, you too. All right. Later.